Welcome to Calm in Action. My name is Michael Haig, a technical marketing engineer at Nutanix. With the Calm 2.7 release, variable functionality has been greatly expanded. You can now validate entry with regex, create multi-select lists, create date time pickers, and more. Let's take a look at how this works. So first I'll navigate to my Calm UI. And to start, we'll go ahead and go to the library section and there's going to be a new field, variable types. We'll go ahead and create a couple of variable types. First, we'll select the project that we want this variable type scope to. Next, we'll name our variable. In this example, we'll be having the end user be able to enter in an IP address and validate that it's a valid IP via regex. So we're going to leave the optional description blank for now. Data type, we're going to leave it as string, uh, but just so you're aware, we can now do integer, multi-line string when you need to do carriage returns, a date picker, a time picker, and also a date time picker. We also have the option to do multiple inputs. We're going to leave that blank for now. We'll come back to this later. And for input type, we can do simple with just a default value or predefined from static values at launch or eScript or HTTP. Again, we're going to come back to some of these other values uh, later. To start with, for the value field, this is if you want a default. In this particular case, since this variable could be used for a lot of different fields, I'm just going to leave this blank. The key part we want to do is validate with regular expressions. So if you Google IP address regex, this Stack Overflow page will appear. And there's a, a great regex provided by this user. We'll go ahead and copy that into our buffer. And we'll paste that in here. And we can also test the regex to make sure it's working as we expect. So if we did 10.0.0, for instance, and we see that's not a valid IP, 300. We also see it's not a valid IP. But let's put this as 100. And we see that it is a valid IP. So our regex is working as expected. So we'll go ahead and save that. Next up, we're going to add another variable type. This one we'll call SSH public key. And if you use call much, you know that we often use keys to SSH into virtual machines. So we're going to do a similar uh, type of validation with regex. Again, we're going to leave it as string and simple. This time with the regex, I'm going to Google SSH public key regex. And on this GitHub, Again, there's a, a great regex example here. So we will go ahead and select that. And again, let's test this regex out. So in this instance, let me go ahead and cat out a common column key that I use. And we see that it's valid. Now, if for some reason we had a typo or it wasn't a valid key, we again see that it's not matched. So the regex looks good. In this example, I am going to provide a default value. So this is a common public key I use across uh, my blueprints in this particular project. So I'd rather have that uh, predefined value in there. So again, we'll save that. Now let's go to the blueprint section. I'm going to select a simple blueprint. This is really just right now deploying a basic CentOS machine. First, we see that we have this instance public key. Let's see how we can switch this over to our regex validated variable that we just created. Under the data type, we see these similar options as we saw before. But if we scroll to the bottom, we see our predefined variables. I'll go ahead and select the SSH public key. And we see that we have all of these options available to us, uh, similar to the library section. I am going to mark this variable mandatory. That way the end user has to enter it in. And so that looks good. Next up, let's say we want the end user to enter in DNS addresses. So we'll add another variable. Again, we're going to go down and select our IP address. We're not going to provide a value. However, we do want to again mark this variable mandatory. And lastly, let's say the, we need the end user to select some NTP addresses to provide proper time for our virtual machine. 
So we'll go ahead and enter in a new variable called NTP. Again, we'll do a string. This time we're going to go down here and select additional options. And we're going to do a multiple input array. So we see for the various input types, uh, we can do predefined eScript or HTTP task. We're going to go ahead and do predefined. So let's say internally uh, we have an NTP server, 10.10.10.10, and we want to make this default. However, we also want to provide the user uh, some options for NTP.org time servers. We'll make this one default, and we'll also add a couple more of these. Again, we'll mark this variable as mandatory. And now let's go ahead and save our blueprint. Before we launch, let's say we're likely going to be reusing this NTP variable in other blueprints in the future. We can easily click on this menu icon and hit save as a template. We can optionally change any of the fields. I'm going to leave them as default and then hit publish. And that's going to put our variable into our library so we can easily reuse it in future blueprints. All right, now let's go ahead and launch and name this. So we now see we have our instance public key already provided for the user. DNS we'll have to manually provide. So let's say I do 8.8.8 .8 .8 and I have a typo, I accidentally forget the period. So let's go ahead and hit create. And we see that we can't launch the application due to the regex not matching. So we catch that, which is nice, and we'll hit uh, period. And perhaps we also want to add an additional NTP server. So we see our first two uh, that were predefined to us. And let's say we actually don't want zero, uh, but we do want two and three. So now when we go ahead and hit create, everything should pass our regex and meet our uh, requirements of having values. And we'll actually go and launch the application. So again, with the Calm 2.7 release, we now have advanced variable types uh, to provide advanced functionality for your application blueprints. Thanks for your time today.